Sinus X minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Welcome to the Reimagined Hot Wheels channel for the final part of the Cool Combi Road Warrior series. At the end of this video, there will be a preview of one of my next projects. All right, let's make some gear. This is Millie Pot, a two-part putty, and once mixed together, will harden. Before it does, we'll make some gear. Taking the putty, I have rolled out a cigar shape, and I will begin to cut them into bedroll shapes. To give the gear a more natural, settled look, we will form them together. You are not limited to just scratch building. You can add anything you may have. Here I am adding an old Hot Wheels tire from the spare parts box. I am going to be scratch building a tarp later in the video. Before I do so, here I am cutting some strips of styrene into rough shapes, which I will glue together and glue to the roof. And once the tarp is covering it, they should show through and look pretty good. Here is a look of what we have added to the roof rack. It looks good now, but once the tarp is added, it will look even better. Alright, let's make the tarp. We will use the millie putt again and flatten a piece to begin to cover the gear. We will leave some exposed to be seen by the viewer. And some of the tools we can use are an X-Acto knife and we will begin to expose the gear inside with it. Another tool you can use to create folds and impressions in the tarp is a toothpick. You can see here I am using it and the tarp is beginning to take shape. Another tool we can use is our finger. And you can see here I'm using it to expose the black wall's rims. Looking around for some other things to add to the roof, I came across this from the company called the Chichi Group. It's an open grate platform for HL scale trains. I believe a small piece of this and these small little bits will look good on top of the roof. Using some super glue, we will fix them to the roof. I think it's starting to look good. What do you think so far? Let me know in the comments below. Using the same product, I cut a piece to fit the back of the combi. Once painted, it should look pretty good. I painted the base black before doing the wheel swap. I'm still learning exactly how to do these and would like to make full axles in the future. In this case, I cut the axles to size and super glued them using baking soda to help give it a strong bond. Hopefully in the future I will get better with the proper tools. The combi was primed with camouflage sand from Krylon. We will begin to paint the details on the roof rack. Using real basswood strip stained would look better, but I'm happy with this look and I'll try that on another project. I'm going for a real wind weather look for this custom. It's why I chose the sand color. We will begin to use a technique called dry brushing. Going over the sand color with the blue will look like dust and dirt when done. What you do is put paint on the brush and remove most of it on a paper towel. The idea is to let the paint be applied to raised surfaces. In this case, however, I wanted this paint to be the original color of the combi. Applying it heavy and pressing harder on the model will leave more paint, but not cover all the sand color. Combined with chipping techniques covered later in the video, the full effects will show. Here you can see the paint being applied and the sand color left in the recesses. It looks like dust collected on a road warrior road. Craft paints seem to work best in using more expensive ones. Here you can see the end results of the dry brushing technique. We will use the same technique on the skull battering ram. Starting with black craft paints and covering most of the surface, the sand color will be left in the recesses like the teeth. This technique has been around for a while and I learned it from an old Shepard Payne book. Yes, I said book. Painting some detail in the eyes and I would hate to see this coming down the road at me. It would be cool if this was lighted with red LEDs. We'll save that for a future project. Next, we will use some textured silver enamel to dry brush over the black areas. This is a very useful technique, and as you can see, it adds a lot of detail to a model. Now on to the chipping technique that I mentioned earlier. This is just one method that can be used. I have taken and ripped off a piece of kitchen scouring pad. The fibers will stick out and you can soak them in the paint. Removing most of the paint using a pair of tweezers in this case, and then lightly touch the areas with rust or primer color. It will leave little areas that look like primer color showing through. Again, we will use the dry brush to pick out the details of the engine. You can see how this technique is really useful. Using some artistic license that will pick out some color detail on the engine, the custom is really coming together now. Some of the best paints to use for customs has to be those small testers enamels. They really go on well, I'm really surprised. 
Creating customs for me at least, I start with the bare 94 cent car for the most part, with an idea in my mind that leads to an end result. How exactly we get there is not known before started. They were a lot of fun to do and the main point of my channel is to get that point across to you the viewer. I hope you have enjoyed this series and in the future unless the video is long, it will be uploaded from start to finish. I believe my work will stand up for itself, but without you, the subscriber, I am nothing. And I would really love to show you future videos, so if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe and tap the bell to help support my channel. So thanks for watching the Cool Combi Road Warrior series, and thank you to all my subscribers. And if you're not a subscriber, thank you too. But be sure to subscribe and tap that bell. If you're still watching, remember to wait for the preview of the T2 Junkman build. Okay, see you in the next video. Yeah, I just lost the thing. Mm -hmm.